All right, guys, greetings. Welcome back to the channel. Savage shamans, priests, beasts, gods, and goddesses in training. I am Uncle Makara, here to spread the gospel, the truth, okay? Today we're talking about something amazing. Today we're talking about something amazing. Today we're talking all about if reality actually is a simulation. Now, I don't know if it's a simulation or not, and I'm not gonna try to prove if it's a simulation or not. All I'm saying is, let's start to look at this differently, okay? I was speaking to one of my students about this yesterday, where, you know, we have this idea that science has given us of the double slit experiment. And sure, it's a, it's a great experiment and scientific, but where is the applicability in our lives with this thing. But let me tell you, this observer effect that they're talking about is actually the observer cause. So what a lot of channelers are saying and what a lot of other esoteric connoisseurs are saying is that we are the simulators, right? From Neville Goddard, who started talking about this, you are, you pushed outwards. The world that you see is you pushed outwards, okay? It's the consciousness being pushed out. All you're reacting to is who you are and who you are is your ideal version. So that means if you're always reacting from your ideal version and coming back to that point, the reality around you will start to shift very quickly you could actually hypnotize yourself and brainwash yourself to change. This is what I do. I mean, look at my wallpaper. It's been this for years. But, but I keep finding the momentum and the energy to manifest trips like this. You see what I'm saying? Like I'm having it in my consciousness and I end up going there to beaches and so forth, right? So I'm already in a beach, bro. You get what I mean? Like I already feel the vibration and the energy because of that wallpaper here. So, <clears throat> so me going to the beach is just, hey, it's just another day, okay? But to somebody else, it might be like, oh, but he's at the beach all the time though. Yeah, what, what's so special about that? Whereas you guys don't understand how to savor the moment and create novelty in each and every moment based on being in the zone, being tapped in, being, feeling really good about yourself, right? Nothing can go wrong when you're feeling so good about your own self, your own state of mind, your own possibilities and chances and choices. Um, last night we had a podcast, it was very cool. Uh, we taught a lot of the secrets based on tulpas. We also have a video here on this channel about tulpas, uh, Topa Mancers Unite, go and check that out. But basically it is how to create your own spirit guide, your own spirit friend in a sense and um, have it help you, have it be something receptive that you actually interact with and help you, almost like a Tamagotchi, right? And th that's the way we described it. Anyway, now I want you guys to start to really understand this thing very differently, okay? So number one, whatever you fall asleep to at night gets impacted on the outside world, projected outwards in your consciousness. So let's say you do a visualization at night where you're climbing a tree, you're gonna see trees everywhere, man. And whatever you hold in your consciousness, whatever you focus on, it grows. And it, it will change the world around you. So if you think this world is a simulation, it will be. And that's actually a great way of thinking about this world, even if it is or it isn't. Because if you think reality is real and it's serious and it, it becomes heavier, your experience of it. But if you think it's a simulation, it not, it's not real, I'm free to roam and, and allow myself to grow and expand, then you give yourself different guidance systems, right? You have a different reach, a different access with that avatar than the previous one, right? So you have to make the conscious choice and understanding that, hey, it might not be a simulation, but I'm gonna live like it is. So that means that I'm the creator of my reality. That means all the bad things that I've, that have happened in my life I've actually got to take responsibility for. 
and not, not many people are willing to do this, right, and face that truth. And that's why they're stuck not manifesting because they have this weird storyline with themselves with that. You know, it's all about the storyline, the way you're writing your story about yourself. So if you're narrating to yourself that you're lower than others and that you're, you know, inferior or you're not getting the opportunities or you're shrinking in your power because of this X, Y, Z, and you're finding all the excuses, understand that that's not the real you and that those are distortions for you to stay in your old avatar. Okay? Rationalizations, overgeneralizations, all these other things, right? All or nothing thinking, all that stuff is just your own insecurities or coping mechanisms projected outwards to keep you in the same cycle. Why? Because the ego likes that certainty. It likes to keep you comfortable. It doesn't want you to actually grow. So that's the thing you also have to understand. This human system is just built to survive. It's not built to thrive. It's not built to like build empires and go travel the world and do amazing things. And it's not meant for that, right? But so the people who do that though, they have overcome something within themselves that they understand how to engage with life in such a way where life starts to co-create with them, okay? They've tapped into the higher energy or the higher consciousness, and they're simply allowing God to peer through and allowing them to hold the grace of that and impact the world through that. Like really, man, people have been limiting you your entire life. Like what makes you think and say that this isn't a simulation, right? Because clearly it is. Like if you notice there's glitches happening, man. Have you ever had it where you just think one thing and you do some maybe ritual one day or you know, you do something and the next day you experience the next day differently, right? Completely new. It's like some days I'm up, some days I'm down, some days I'm confused, some days I'm engaged and energized. And that's life, bro. You've got to adjust yourself, adapt, weave, take rest, explore the infinite edges of this thing. And you know, I've been going internal most of my life and now I love going external. I'm slowly starting to love that actually. To peer out and to contribute, to add value, you know, to give, which I'm doing for, for these videos, right? I'm giving because I'm not attached to this information. It's transformed me. And so I choose to speak about it openly and freely in an open space like this, right? An open forum. But if someone's like, oh yeah, but the simulacrum is going to be way too complicated for our 21st century brains, you see, we will need a huge list of encounters and I, what the, you're taking away from what I'm saying, bro. Hold on a second. So let's take this reality where we're the simulators, okay? If we're feeling sad internally with our state and perspective is sad, so our state and perspective determine our results and the actions we take correct? You also have to have a willingness to walk away from that thing that you so badly desire and crave. Because what are you saying if you want that thing that you don't have it already? So this is a secret that Plato, Einstein, you know, Tesla, Isaac Newton is probably, if they could watch this video, they'd be like, damn, you're onto something, man. Damn. Okay. That's what they'd say in their own ways, you know, like Shakespeare would be like, good heavens or whatever, right? So he's on the brink of something amazing. Okay. Particle to wave, wave to particle. Dr. Joe Dispenza says that through breath work, we can change this, we can become from a particle to a wave and, and so forth. So we can allow ourselves to be from this lower emotion to an elevated emotion, right? So we feel this fear, this grief, this anxiety, these lower based emotions, right? And we allow ourselves to through our breath, let our bodies feel it and process through them, shoot it up to our heads and pineal glands, right? And just shh, exhale it out. And this exercise is such a powerful process. If you guys haven't done Dr. Joe Dispenza's breath work, 
um we have our own version of that at primal sutras if you want to get access to that recording definitely let me know because that changes the way that you perceive reality like seriously with bringing in new life force energy okay there's three things attention the feeling and the will okay once you combine all of these three you use that threefold principle you will start to notice this simulation is changing around you it's crazy man it actually feels nuts but this reticular activation system whatever is happening your selective focus starts to shift what you're looking at and that's the whole double slit experiment man okay depending on who who the observer right is looking at the thing the thing changes i could show up at the oscars with an armani jacket looking so fly but still not being attached to any outcomes still understanding i'm in a simulation and i'm in the thrill of it and so what i have a gold chain on it and what you know that guy's wearing something even more expensive that girl is like doing something else let's not compare apples to lasagnas right we are all different creatures from different planets and different worlds all interacting on one planet our world the earth so instead why don't we join this interplanetary alliance and create different groups and bridges of community so that we can empower each other instead of what keep us down and remain slaves to electronics and the the way that the society is moving or whatever else is is pulling us like some kind of weird momentum thing in the background where we're like yo i'm gonna swim against the grain a little bit right i'm gonna create my own reality because i'm a flow state wizard motherfucker right i'm gonna move with the energy of what i know is capable in me so the state and the perspective and the willingness to walk away from it because this topic by itself is just really what we need this is the key to life or this is the key this is the art of living in a sense right when we realize that feeling is the secret as neville goddard said right through our states we shift the simulation around us which is he would have used that word too but he's just not using it but a lot of people like alan watts will tell you like you know we take serious what the gods made for fun you know so it's that idea of like look this thing is meant to be an open space a playground so if life and reality is truly bending to your will not so much your will by itself but yes the will too because it's the i am presence it's your solar plexus your ego can actually change and ripple you know many people across the planet like so on our podcast yesterday i was saying that you know there can be a holy man walking into a certain environment and the crime rates of that whole neighborhood will start dropping so what if we could bring holy teachings to different parts of the world? Think about it. Carrying the holy frequencies within ourselves. What if we were the holy ones and we raised our consciousness to that level so that wherever we go, we create positive ripples? Isn't that a beautiful vision, man? Like, I love that idea to work on ourselves so much that when we walk into an environment people just feel that aura that essence you know from ourselves and they get a it's infectious right so they get that transferred onto them and now it's like a symbiote right the energy is just moving from one person to the other hey you guys ever watched the movie pay it forward right it's like that whole idea of paying it forward like i don't want it like double it and give it to the next person right and eventually the, the person at the end, they get all of these blessings, all these gifts where people, like maybe 17 people, let's say, passed it on. Or they add something to the pot even, you know? So understand that the benefits of that last person getting that gift is a conglomeration of all other gifts that have been denied, but also added to, right? And so once you understand that that's what the universe is really giving you you're giving getting the gifts of your ancestors if you're tapping into the right energies and frequencies you can access those gifts and this is why i tell you to listen to music of your past like what your parents parents used to listen to you know like really this kind of stuff is really key because it's still in the background right it's still in the reservoirs of our consciousness and our reach of our potential we understand is not only limited to our race and culture, but also like 
what we eat, what we drink, how we move, you know, what we're watching. It's just all encompassing, right? Imagine using ancient wisdom to calm down modern stressors, right? Like applicable ancient wisdom, like not stuff that we can't decipher and understand, but like really something practical that etches us to the past, the grand elements of the past, right? And morphs us into the future. I see a future where I see a world of flow state bliss and magnetic radiance and unlimited godlike essence. May we all become creators and prophets of this new path working. And may we never be the same again. Us, thank you so much for listening and watching, guys. Have an incredible day today, okay? Let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to serve. Let's get it. Upward spiral. Shiva Shakti. You already know what it is. Boom! We're all gonna make it. Okay.